Welcome to Getting Started with Atlas, the professional media player made by Archimedia Technology. I'm Joseph Mark, one of the co-founders of Archimedia, and in this video, I'll show you all the key features of Atlas and how to configure them for your needs. You'll see format support and features for your desktop that used to be found only in professional editors, color correctors, and mastering tools. With Atlas, you'll make your video look and sound the best it possibly can on all kinds of monitors, televisions, and projectors, so you'll know when it's right. And you'll get personal tech support from Archimedia when you need it. Let's start with the player window. Here are your transport controls. Try slow motion and listen to your audio. Click these buttons a couple of times to change speed, forward and backward. Try scrubbing with this playhead and click here and here to set mark in and mark out points. Click here to play in loop mode. The time window here shows your choice of embedded time code, frame number, runtime, or Atlas's unique control track time code. Later we'll see just how important this can be. The next layer of tools is just a right click away. We'll go over all of them, but first let's set up your displays. If you're watching video intended for web browsers or mobile devices, your computer desktop monitor is a good choice. But your computer desktop's window scaler isn't designed for real video fidelity, so be sure to use the zoom feature here to fit your video inside your window with some room to let you see the edges. If you're watching video intended for television, we recommend extending your desktop to a real TV so you can see it at the right frame rate, in full screen, and hear multi-channel audio down mixed the way TVs do it. Even if you're not watching broadcast television formats, the TV will show your video at its best and leave your computer monitor available for the other windows you're probably going to want open at the same time. To give you a picture of the various ways that professionals use Atlas, that's an SDI monitor on the left there, computer desktop in the middle playing four different videos at the same time, an RS-422 jog shuttle wheel next to the mouse, and an ultra-high definition television on the right. And that's my portable Atlas system. I just plug any convenient TV into my i7 laptop's HDMI port, and my jog shuttle wheel runs on USB power. If you have only one screen available, you can enable these overlays and easily switch between desktop mode and full screen mode with keyboard shortcuts. You can open video files normally from your File Explorer window. To set a video format to always open in Atlas, right-click and choose Open with Atlas. But there's another way to open video files that gives you more options. Click here or right-click anywhere and choose Open File. This way, you can choose to add in external audio tracks and order them here above your embedded audio channels or add in external caption or subtitle tracks and choose whether or not to extract embedded titles. Some formats, like experimental HEVC in a transport stream, may have titles embedded more deeply than other formats, so if you expect titles and don't see them, open the file again and choose this option. But don't choose it if you don't need it, because it can take some time. You can always hit the escape key to abort this extraction process and skip right to playing your video. You can also add external titles after your video is loaded. Atlas offers more information for you when opening Digital Cinema and IMF packages. You can skip right to playing your video with a double tap on your Enter key. Or you can browse the metadata package while waiting for Atlas to validate the checksums, file names, file paths, and file sizes according to the CPL or asset map. If you don't see these green check marks telling you all is well, hover your mouse over a yellow warning icon to see what didn't match up. Image sequences like DPX, TIFF, and EXR may come with subfolders, so Atlas automatically plays through them. If Atlas finds anything unusual in the folders, you can see here what Atlas found. Image sequences don't have sound, so you can add external audio tracks here. Some image sequences don't come with a frame rate, 
so a little later we'll show you what you can do about that. Some video files have multiple embedded timecodes and multiple captions or subtitles. Here you can choose which timecode you want to use for reference, and here you can choose which titles track to watch. Here's one quick way to see if your timecode track matches your video. Atlas shows you a control track timecode, precisely calculated to your video format, and it's reliable. Scrub to the end of your video and see if your file's embedded timecode is still in sync with your Atlas control track timecode. This control track timecode can be a lifesaver when you're using Atlas under remote control. For example, by your videotape recorder, encoder, editor's capture card, jog shuttle wheel, and so on. Now let's look at the captions and subtitles viewer. Open it here, choose a titles track, and try double clicking on a title to skip right to it. Atlas supports any language installed in your Windows operating system. Now we'll add in an external titles track in an Asian character set and another that is longer than this video. I can see all those titles, but obviously I can't skip to the ones that are timed later than this video's duration. And we'll come back to captions and subtitles again later. Most professional workspaces today don't have convenient access to waveform monitors and vector scopes, and many jobs aren't about SDI anyway. So Atlas includes a vector scope and a video measurement tool that resembles an analog or SDI waveform monitor. Right-click if you want them to stay on top of the player window, put them where you want them, and switch between horizontal parade and vertical parade with a flick of the mouse. Multi-channel audio can be a challenge on a computer or a television with stereo speakers. I'll add in an external music track and a voice track. To make it easy to hear them, they don't match this video. The voice track is badly distorted, so I'll mute it. The music track makes it hard to hear the dialogue, so I'll mute that too. Audio meters can't tell me everything about how the primary stereo mix compares to the 5.1 mix. So I'll mute the 5.1 tracks and listen to my television stereo speakers or my headphones. Now I'll mute the stereo mix and listen to the 5.1 mix. If I suspect some tracks aren't mapped correctly, I'll reroute them and see if that explains what I'm hearing. Audio Sync sometimes needs a special focus. When I saw that gun go off, I paused the video, clicked here to mark out, used my arrow keys to back up a little, clicked here to mark in, and clicked here to listen in slow motion while keeping an eye on the audio meters. Aha! That gunshot sounded two frames before the gun fired. Later, we'll see where to enter an audio delay, plus or minus, so I can check further in this video to see if the audio drifted or remains two frames early throughout. There's more to media files than what we can see and hear, so right-click and read the file properties. Here's a timestamp, because you may want to export this metadata to a text or XML file for email or for your database. Here's the computer I'm using. Here's the file name and path. And here are the video attributes. You can also copy and paste into email or your report forms. Here's the metadata for all the embedded audio tracks. And you can see that they're embedded in the same file as the video because it's the same file name in the same folder path. Here's the metadata for all the external audio tracks I'm listening to right now, including their file names and their different folder paths. Here's the metadata for all the embedded titles and all the external ones, including their file names and their different folder paths. Here are all the embedded time codes, plus the Atlas control track time code for comparison. If you want to go deep into MXF metadata, it might be easier to export these file properties and use your text reader's search function to find things like the encoder's signature, byte streams, and so on. We're more than halfway through this video now, so pause if you want to take a break. Next, we're going to browse all the tools just to right-click away. Every atlas includes a set of test patterns, so you can see what your monitor or television is showing you. This recent file list is quite handy. Choose your captions or titles track here and load external ones here. 
Choose here which timecode track you want to see in the timecode reader. Auto sizing your display here, or fit to window, lets your window scaler into the picture, so I don't use it. Instead, I use this zoom feature for the player window, and I know it's right because I can compare it to my real television, full screen, playing the video at its native frame rate. The file's aspect ratio is a normal default, but what if it's not announced in the file header, or it's just wrong? Try these, and one of them will show you what's right. Choose which time reference you want in the player time window, and in the overlay. Here, you can overlay audio levels and video properties for when you want to know the difference between the video file and your desktop. Atlas includes a unique, professional quality scaler that makes intelligent alternative suggestions based on your video's format, and you can choose any size you need in any aspect ratio, so you can play any video from the smallest web sizes up to 4K and beyond, full screen, and scaled correctly to any computer, television, or SDI screen with immaculate precision. These video and audio controls can be programmed to shortcut keys, as you'll see a little later. Here are my personal choices for shortcut keys to open the tool windows that we saw earlier. Click here to see the file properties we talked about. Click here to check the state of your license. And click here to import a new or upgraded license. And of course, the reference manual is included, so you don't have to go online when you need it. Now we're going to configure Atlas for your work. This can get a little technical, so please remember that you can write to support at archimediatech.com whenever you have a question. You can save your settings in network folders for your colleagues to use, or email them to other Atlas users so they'll see what you see, or make a set of preferences for the different jobs you do that you can import to any Atlas anywhere, or create one standard configuration for all the Atlases in your department or company. For today's complex media working environment, this is my favorite Atlas convenience. If your computer is online, Atlas can notify you of new releases. If Atlas can't read data fast enough from your network storage, or your video format is too much for your CPU to decode, you may still see the video, but want to be alerted that you're missing something. I choose Edit Room Gray here, so I can see video edges clearly. Choose your audio meter preferences here, and set your vector scope and waveform preferences here. These playback options are pretty self-explanatory, but take notice of these interlacing swaps. Whether you're familiar with interlacing artifacts or not, some combination of these boxes will look much better than the others, so try them. Some video files contain timecode tracks starting at non-zero values, like 5830 common in broadcasting, for example. Or you may want the Atlas control track to start with the embedded timecode start value and then track your video accurately from there. Some frame sequences don't announce their frame rate, so set your preferences here. Here's the audio delay we mentioned before, plus or minus, and always frame accurate to the control track. If you're working with interlaced video, choose a jog mode here. And there's the asterisk showing field 1, field 2, and here you see the drop frame semicolon. When you play digital cinema outside of an actual cinema, it looks different. In this picture, none of those screens have the same color space, dynamic range, or setup, and one of those four videos is digital cinema. So use these settings here to make digital cinema XYZ color space look like the other video files you play in RGB color space. Here, you can generate encryption keys, import decryption keys, and manage your key library. Some IMF packages keep files in external folders, so here you can save your frequently used folder paths. Here you can set your preference for jog wheel sensitivity. If your video playback stutters, check that this resync box is not checked. It's only for special situations. The rest of this tab is rarely needed because Atlas is pretty smart about buffering but call us if you think you need help here. Expert users can open multiple Atlas instances, each loading different media like this picture. Contact us if you want to learn how. Here, you control the SDI stream to suit your destinations. Choose native color space and component bit depth if your destinations support them. 
otherwise restrict them to suit your equipment. We recommend that you open your graphics cards control panel in Windows and turn off all those enhancements that make video games so edgy because those edges don't really exist in your video files. When you have a screen attached by HDMI or DisplayPort, allow programs like Atlas to control scaling and refresh rate. Some newer screens don't support interlacing or older broadcast formats, so let Atlas scale, crop, and frame double when you need it. Here, you can tell Atlas which screen you want to use for default full screen viewing. Some captions and subtitles come with backgrounds and some don't. Here, you can make them easy to read. Every titles worker knows this value, minus 360,000 milliseconds, that's one hour. So when you have titles made to a proxy starting at zero time, and you want to see and navigate them with a video starting at one hour time, as often happens in broadcasting, offset it here. Remember that you can enable deep scan when you open a file, but if you have a set of files that always needs it, you can save a configuration just for them. Some titles come with positioning information, but if you get tired of looking around the screen to read them, you can watch them always at the bottom of your video. And whenever your video file's embedded timecode isn't a reliable timing reference for navigating your titles, remember that Atlas's control track is always frame accurate and continuous. You might be familiar with Adobe, Avid, Apple, or Microsoft keyboard shortcuts. I started with the Final Cut Pro shortcuts and then added my own. Remember to export your settings so you can recall your shortcuts later, especially if you share your Atlas with coworkers. Please don't forget that Atlas comes with personal tech support. If you see an error message while opening a file, don't quit yet. Click through to see if your video will play at least partially. Right click to file properties, save it, and email it to support at archimediatech.com. We'll help you sort it out. From the whole Archimedia team, thanks for watching this getting started video. If you don't have your own Atlas and want to try it out on your computer, please call or write to info at archimediatech.com.